Hey there YouTube, this is Adam from Retro Repairs and today is mail day. Uh, I went and picked up a few packages from the post office so let's uh, let's just dive right into it and see what we get. So I'm going to start with this guy here. Um, this is basically a Game Boy cartridge. Bought it uh, online for $12 I think. And let's see what have we got here. Instructions. Hi Adam, thanks again for your purchase. I trust your item will arrive to you as described. Sincerely, Joel. Well, since I bought this as untested, not working, I mean, it's going to be hard to not live up to that promise. But let's see what we've got here. There we go, Pokemon Gold. Um, so the seller told me that this one here, it has a bad battery. So he tested it with a multimeter and it would not register any type of charge. Um, otherwise he said it was untested. So let's give it a try, let's see what we got here. Um, so once again, I don't have an actual Game Boy, but I do have a Super Game Boy for my Super Nintendo. So we're just gonna try that. All right, so TV's turning on. There we go, and power. No. No go. All right, so as described, thank you, Joel. Um, that doesn't work. We'll uh, we'll dive into this a little bit later in another video, but um, I'm curious what it is. It could just be these contacts need cleaning. It could be more at play here, but uh, yeah, we'll check that out. See if we can't get that up and running. This guy cost me twelve dollars, so I mean, pretty good deal. Still, these generally sell forty or fifty dollars. So if I can get that up and running. $12 purchase is, that works for me. Um, on to the next All right, one. So this is package number two. Let's, uh, let's open it up and see what we've got here. So nicely packaged, that's always good. An extra elastic band, you know, never a bad thing. Um, so lots of bubble wrap, and we have a top loader. So this guy I bought for about $45. Um, if working, these resell for quite a lot of money, so it's a good purchase in my opinion. Now, I've never actually had an NES top loader before, so um, I don't really know exactly what to expect, but... This power switch seems very stiff. I don't know if that's typical for these or not, but uh, let's give this a try, see if we get anything. So the guy told me when he tried to use it, um, he couldn't get anything out of it. So it would just, it wouldn't turn on. Uh, let's see here. So we got this on channel three. Um, you note on the top loader, they got rid of the AV out and just went with RF. So. I don't know why they did that, maybe to try and save space and cost, but it seems like a backwards move in my opinion. And let's find me a game. Uh, let's go with the old classic Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt. Now the nice thing about these top loaders is, um, unlike the front loader that we're used to, these rarely have read issues the way that the uh, front loaders did so unless the pins are really dirty it reads almost everything so let's get this on to channel three uh, TV. channel three and action so nothing but so we got a gray screen. Let's uh, 
try to just do this a little bit. Still a gray screen. So we're getting power. Um, we're getting a video signal, but we're not getting any uh, actual game. So whether it's not reading the game or one of the chips is damaged, who knows. But uh, I'm just wiggling the RF cable a bit. Doesn't really make any appreciable difference. No. So, again, as advertised, this top loader is not working. So, that will, uh, that'll be another video, and we'll open that up, take a look at it, see if we can't get that up and running again. Um, got two more packages here, so let's, uh, see what else we've got. Now, this is probably my favorite of the, pa of the bunch. Um, this box barely looks like it made it to the post office. Um, the guy that sold this, I bought it on eBay, cost me $10.50. Um, so maybe the guy was a little bitter that he only got $10.50 for a Dreamcast with three controllers. So he packed it like absolute garbage. This is painter's tape, and it comes like right off. This whole like this is the worst packing job I think I've ever seen. This is just outright impressive. I'm not even mad. This is this is just hilarious. So we open her up. Like that's ripped right off. That's nice. Nice plaid box of some type. Uh, fragile. So whatever. And there we go. So we've got oh four controllers. That's a bonus. Four Dreamcast controllers. Um, and I mean for ten fifty, if one of these works, that's my money back right there. Um, I would imagine the controllers probably are fine, but we'll see. I guess um, no bubble wrap, no packaging in here, just whatsoever to speak of. So I mean. This is a guy that clearly doesn't really care. Maybe he thought because it was not working for him. He doesn't have to pack it up well. Who knows? So, is that everything? Yeah, that's it. No cords. I don't remember offhand if the listing came with cords or not, but luckily I do have some, so um, I'm going to grab my cables. We'll get this guy all set up and... Uh, see what we can get out of this. Okay, so I've got this all hooked up. Um, the nice thing about the Dreamcast is this is one of the few systems that actually supports S-Video natively. You don't have to do any modifications. And S-Video will give you a slightly better picture than standard composite will. So I've got it hooked up with that. Figure, why not? Um, so let's open it up. We'll throw in some Tony Hawk Pro Skater. This is an original disc. Um, and we will make sure that this actually works. I guess before I do so, I should check um, NTSCU. So it is a North American model. Just wanted to make sure he didn't have a PAL version or something like that, which wouldn't read his discs. Um, this is one of the controllers that came in the bundle, but I have my own, my own VMU in here. So I guess let's turn it on, see what we've got. Power. All right, so far so good. Time of day, so the classic dead battery issue. So I'm getting no action out of the controller. Um, let's try that again with a different controller. Yeah, nothing. So, um, I'm guessing the board on the Dreamcast that controls the controller ports, um, that might have an issue with it. Um, I've seen cases where it's as simple as replacing a resistor, so hopefully it's something simple like that for me, and we'll be able to get that resolved. So, the fact that we're getting video so far is a good sign. 
Um, the disc wasn't spinning or anything, but we'll see what happens once we get past that startup screen. So that's another video for later to try and get that Dreamcast up and running. And then we'll move on to the final box that I've got here. So uh, I'll be back in a moment once we're ready for that. All right, so this box, um, this came in a couple of days ago, actually. And it's from our favorite gaming co country, Japan. So let's crack this open and just take a look, see what we've got here. All right, so looks like it's pretty well wrapped up and as you can see I've got a couple packages of games and a Famicom. So let's check out this Famicom. Um, this one I've been looking forward to receiving because in the photos anyways it appeared to be in fairly good condition. Um, again it was listed as untested. I believe, I don't, or not working, I don't recall, but we will open it up and see what, what needs to happen here. Generally these things don't develop major issues, um, so hopefully it's a relatively straightforward repair. Oh, the, uh, oh, there's a nice uh, sticker, thank you. Oh, that's not even a sticker, that's good. So, main body, three, box, five, instruction, five. Um, I don't know what that means, but it says there is something not including in this item. So, maybe that means there's no power cord or AV, which hopefully that's the reason why it doesn't work, because they couldn't plug it in. It does not say there are some troubles in display or sound or buttons. It doesn't say controller is defective, typically does not work well. And it doesn't have defective, typically does not work well, some does not power on. Um, yeah, obviously English not being their first language, but I mean that's a nice little card to give me a rough idea of what's going on with it. Don't really know until we hook it up, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna open all this up and then we'll uh, try a few games in a moment. Okay, so if you haven't seen a Famicom before, um, I'm gonna give you a quick little overview of this system. Um, I did a video where I opened up and cleaned a Famicom and restored some of the original color. Now this one's pretty white; it's not yellowed at all that I can tell. So I'm not gonna do that to this, but I am gonna give it a clean as it is just kind of dirty. Um, a, a thorough cleaning should bring that clear that right up. So um, the Famicom is quite small and I mean you have no real reference here but let me grab my NES and that's the difference between the two. Famicom is maybe barely more than half the size of an NES. Add into the fact that it's thinner and it's looking at almost close to a quarter the size of an NES. Um, North American style. And then we have the top loader, which is more in line with the size of the Famicom. So uh, fairly small. The cartridges are different. Here we have an NES cartridge, and there we have a Famicom cartridge. So quite a bit shorter and a little bit skinnier as well. So the NES cartridges will not fit in the Famicom at all. Like it physically doesn't fit in the hole and the pin layout is different as well. So this has 72 pins. These I believe are, excuse me, these are 64 pins if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong, but um, yeah, they physically do not fit. However, they are compatible if you do get an adapter. So you can get a pin converter that allows you to play Nintendo games on a Famicom, which isn't as common, but the more common adapters to find are to play Famicom games on a Nintendo. Um, as a lot of Famicom games, they weren't never released in North America, so that's one way to get around that. Um, so kind of moving on through this, let's uh, take a bit closer look. So the Famicom has hardwired in controllers, and they're, they're only about three feet long, so um, the deal was in Japan, space comes at a premium, so people sit three feet away from their TV and play their video games. 
Um, here in North America, you're used to laying back in the couch and playing, and for me to sit back with this in my hand up close, I've got the Famicom literally at my feet. If there's two of us, I, I don't really know how we make that work. So, kind of an odd thing that we're not used to here, but, I mean, it is what it is. Um, the NES controllers typically are about five or six feet, I believe, so they are a bit longer than you're used to. The nice thing about them being built in is they don't go missing, so most systems that you buy will come complete with controllers. Um, this front port was for peripherals such as the light gun, so you plug it into the front. That They are not compatible with North American stuff, so stuff like the NES Zapper has a different plug than the Famicom does. Um, otherwise, uh, on the back, we have power, your switch for TV and game, so you could switch, if you have an RF switch plugged in, you could switch between watching your TV and then playing your game. The channel switch, which switches between channels 1 and channel 2, um, in North America that means you have to use channel 95 and 96, and then the RF switch input. Um, you have to use a standard, regular, or standard Nintendo RF switch, North American style, so that's what I have right here. So we'll plug that in. Um, as far as the power goes though, it will physically fit a North American NES power. However, you should never use that. The reason being the North American Nintendo branded power adapters, they actually don't convert the AC power from your wall into DC power like all others do. It remains in AC and then the system itself converts it. So that means that if you plug AC into a Famicom, you're going to blow something Hopefully it's just a capacitor and a power or a uh, voltage regulator, but it very, very easily could be something a bit more important. So don't do that. I've got actually a generation one Sega Genesis power cord, which I'm using, and that works just fine with a Famicom. So we have to put the TV onto channel 95. And let's give it a try. So. We're going to start with Super Mario USA, and this was basically a re-release of Super Mario 2 as we know it. Um, Super Mario 2 was different in Japan than it was in North America. Um, rumor has it that Nintendo of America thought Super Mario 2 was too hard for Americans to play, so they released a different version. Um, so this is that different version just released in Japan. So power on, and nothing. We are on game, yep. Channel, oh, channel one, let's do that. That would be why we're getting nothing, because I put it on channel 95, so. So we have a gray screen again, just like that NES top loader I just opened up. So let's try just pulling the cartridge out a bit, just in case it's a uh, dirty connector. Well, now we have a little hum. Oh, now we have some scrambled picture. So I think this is just a uh, dirty cartridge connector. I'm gonna grab a cloth, we'll wipe that out and see if this works. Okay, so I can't find my cloth right now. So what I'm gonna do is uh, another little trick. So you grab some alcohol, grab a cotton swab or Q-tip and get the Q-tip nice and wet. Now, what we're gonna do is generously get those contacts wet, and then while wet, we're gonna plug the system and just put it into the cartridge slot a number of times. The idea being here, the alcohol will help to clear up some of the dust and other debris that might be in that cartridge slot gonna let it air dry for a bit. The nice thing about isopropyl alcohol is it dries very very fast. Um, maybe about 15 seconds and these will be dry enough to use. So we're gonna let that dry for a few more seconds and you can smell it. So you smell the contacts. If it still smells like alcohol it's not dry. 
if it doesn't smell like alcohol anymore, that means it's probably good to go. So that just smells like, I don't know, old stuff. So that's probably good to go. Let's put it in, power. Oh, uh, I gotta plug it in. Power. There we go, Super Mario USA. So it looks like this works. So as I mentioned, this is the Super Mario 2 that we are all used to in North America. Well, this appears to work just fine. Um, let's try a couple other games, see what else we've got here. So, back in the stack, um, so what the deal is, I bought two different um, lots of games from the same seller. Uh, shipping from Japan can be fairly expensive, so if you're buying something like a Famicom and you want some games, your best bet is to buy bundles of games and ideally all from the same seller. Um, so each of these packs cost me about $10, and once you add in some shipping, normally it's another $20 in shipping. By buying these all together, it was reduced to about $7 in shipping per bundle, so 7 for this, 7 for these, 7 for that. Um, so I got quite a bit here. I think in all, this ended up costing me about $70 total, which is a pretty good deal, especially considering this works. So we have Dragon Ball 3, Super Mario Brothers 3, um, Yoshi's something, Yoshi's Cookie maybe? I'm not sure. Um, I have no idea what that is. Hinotori. So, something. My Japanese is not very good. Uh, Exerion. So again, I'm not familiar with most of these games. Obviously, I'm familiar with Super Mario Brothers, but there we have the original Super Mario Brothers. So we have Super Mario Brothers 1, Super Mario Brothers USA, and 3. We have two copies of three. Uh, another Yoshi game. This might be just the normal Yoshi, the one that's kind of Tetris-like. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, something involving a penguin and a seal. Or a sea lion, or whatever the heck that is. Oh, Antarctic Adventure. Well, there we go. Uh, Transformers game. That's cool. Mystery of Convoy. So, I'm going to have to try that out. Tiger. Looks like some sort of shooting helicopter game. Uh, Twin B. Hmm, whatever. And it looks like there's some marker on the label too, so... We'll see if that can't come off. And then we have... I have no clue what that is. No English on the label. So, um, I mean, with Famicoms, some of these games are perfectly playable if you don't know Japanese. Something like Super Mario Bros. 3. I mean, you can play that without a problem. Yeah, so these all need to be cleaned. I think the problem is these games are just... Yeah, I'm getting gray screen again. So let's try that uh, alcohol on the contacts trick again. I don't know what I did with my Q-tip. Oh, just use, there it is. See how dirty that came out so lots of uh, buildup on these contacts and usually it's just oxidization so let that kind of dry a little bit and see if we can't get Super Mario Brothers 3 working I don't like that hum but There you go, it goes away once you get uh, 
See, as you can see, this is almost entirely in English. So, oops, wrong button. I'm playing with one hand, so please excuse my horribleness. Oops. Oh well. But it seems to work just fine, so um, solid purchase, I think, and uh, we've got a whole whack of games to go with it. So we're going to clean this system up. I'm going to try and flip some of these games. A couple of them are doubles, and we've got, my, got ourselves a Famicom. Um, so that's it for this video. I've opened up all my mail today. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to stay tuned when I actually take all these systems on one by one and try and get them working, clean them up, and make them as good as new again. Thanks a lot. If you haven't already, be sure to like the video, subscribe to my channel, um, leave a comment below, tell me what you think. If there's uh, something you'd like to see me try and repair, try and open up, show you how to clean, show you how to use, um, let me know. I'd be more than happy to see what I can do. Thanks a lot again, and we'll see you next time.